Welcome to Quick Pilot Topics. Visit our website at avtutorials.com for our free two hour ebook audiobook titled 12 Easy Ways Pilots Get in Trouble. Now, let's join Stephen Russ. Welcome to Quick Pilot Topics, episode number three. I'm Steve. I'm an airline pilot, flight instructor, flight engineer, previous examiner, and an A&P mechanic. I'm joined today by my brother, Russ, who always has good questions about flying, and here he is. So, Russ, what have you got today? So, I've heard of this thing called FIS. What is that? FIS. Well, it's Flight Information Services. And what it is, it's a service that provides meteorological information and the FAA abbreviates that as METI, M-E-T-I, and aeronautical information, and again, they abbreviate that as A-I. Pilot awareness of weather and or airspace constraints while providing information for decision support tools and improving safety. To put it a different way, it's a way to augment pilot voice communication with flight service stations and other air traffic control facilities. So how does this work in the cockpit? Well, Flight Information Service dash broadcast, or we can call it FISB, is the system that provides MEDI and AI, and it's provided over the Universal Access Transceiver Data Link Service. That's a lot. You have mm -hmm. to you, you basically have to have equipment that receives the information. So while you're in flight, it provides meteorological and aeronautical information, and these products are broadcast over the ADSB. UAT link so that pilots have timely information of regional weather and national airspace system status changes that might impact their flight. Okay, so exactly what kind of information can I get while in flight? You can get a whole lot of stuff that was just previously unheard of in previous decades. We're talking about NOTAMs, airspace closures, TFRs, NEXRAD radar imagery, METARs, TAFs, SIGMETs, the beauty of this is that much of this can be displayed graphically, which really helps the pilot make quick decisions in the air. Sounds really great, especially since pilots have always had to get this information over the phone before flight or by radio once in the air. Well, that's true. Uh, as great as it is, believe it or not, it's not without restrictions, as are most things in aviation. It's critical that pilots understand that FISB meteorological information, again, that's called METI, and aeronautical information, AI, products are advisory use information only, and they must not be used as the sole source of METI and AI for making operational decisions. Well, that takes some of the fun out of it. If this information can't be used as the only source for making operational decisions, what's the reasoning behind this? The FAA documentation about this defines FIS as what's called advisory use information. This is information delivered to the cockpit to assist pilots in the safe conduct of the flight and aircraft movement, but that delivery method can be subject to alteration, corruption, something called latency, or other impairments, as well as disruptions in the data link service. So for that reason, users may not solely rely upon this information for making operational decisions. Okay, so if I'm flying along and buildups are popping up around me, and there's thunderstorm activity, does this mean that I cannot use the NEXRAD imagery to get around the weather? Actually, that's exactly correct. You cannot. As mentioned, the latency the FAA talks about refers to the fact that the imagery can be very old, sometimes as old as 15 minutes or so, maybe even later. In the world of thunderstorm activity, a lot can change in that period. Right. But you can use the NEXRAD imagery as a planning tool early on to watch weather trends and to compare it against real-time information such as PIREPs and METARs. So in other words, it's really a planning tool. It is not a thunderstorm avoidance tool. For thunderstorm avoidance, you must have airborne weather radar. So I guess the big advantage is that FIS makes it easier for the pilot to get specific information like NOTAMs and METARs. Right, and that information is very helpful to have in flight. FIS makes it easier and even faster to obtain that information rather than trying to talk to flight service. The whole world of FIS is actually very in-depth, and this is just a simple overview. Pilots should read the FAA documentation on how the system works as well as what limitations it has. 
And pilots must really know the electronic equipment in their airplane because that can impose additional limitations and latency issues that the pilot has to be aware of. So that pretty much wraps it up. And uh, thanks for listening, everybody. We appreciate it. We hope that you join us for the next episode. Visit avtutorials.com for a free two-hour ebook audiobook titled 12 Easy Ways Pilots Get in Trouble. Remember to listen next week and happy flying. <laughs>